Okay, everyone, here we are with the latest and greatest ink and acrylic demo for the Patreon subscribers. So, uh, for this one, I am working at 18 by 24 on the reverse side of a sheet of watercolor paper. This is just a big, old, cheap multimedia pad from Canson, uh, but I like them because they can really take a beating and they don't have a problem absorbing a lot of wet and dry media. So the reverse side of these sheets is a lot smoother than the front, which works a lot better when I'm putting down these parallel pen lines so that there's less, uh, less stuff for them to get caught on and to spit. So I have a rough pencil outline down on the paper before I dive in with the ink. Uh, just to make sure that I've got the basic proportions right and the basic angles of the figure correct. And I'm working from a piece of reference. Uh, she's laying on a bed. Her arms are sort of crossed in front of her. One of them is uh, protruding forward, dangling over the side of the bed. The other one is sort of uh, curled up off to her side. And the camera is at a bit of an angle, so it looks like we're seeing things a little bit further out of perspective than they might actually be, but uh, I'm going to show you this thing flat at the end of the demo so you can see it. And I'm working fairly quickly, fairly carefully, making sure that I get the lines where they need to go, massing in the hair with my pen, making sure that uh, her facial features are where they need to be, and just sort of bouncing around through the figure from angle to angle having fun following the rhythms of the curves. And I think the thing that drew me to this piece of reference more than anything else was that she had cowboy boots on, which I thought was kind of funny. And I wanted to draw them. So here we are. Shoes are always a pain in the neck to get right in perspective uh, with foreshortening, especially when you're, you're just sort of diving in it's easy to let them look a little bit funnier than they should. But I think I got the basic shapes down for these A-OK. -okay. Just paying attention to where the leather creases and how it folds over her feet. So something here that I'm going to have to deal with later on in the demo is do I want to just leave her sort of floating in midair? Do I want to treat her as a totally separate thing from the background and, and treat it very flatly? Do I want to incorporate elements of the background that are actually in the reference photography? Uh, you know, where do I want to take it? And that evolves as I move through the piece. So with this way of working, I don't always have an end game in mind. I'm reacting. I am responding to the lines that I'm putting down. I am letting the drawing take me where it wants to take me. And I'm just there for the ride to make sure that uh, things get put on paper. So putting in her hand here, drawing her fingers. Putting more additions in for the hair. Dropping this other hand in on this side of her body. adding a dangling cigarette there to that hand, making sure that the emphasis is present in the lines where I want it to be present. And at this point, the drawing is basically done. So I'm going to be going in with FW acrylic ink and white gesso. Actually, this isn't white acrylic paint, this is white gesso, which I wanted to try for the extra tooth that it gives to the surface uh, that it's placed on. I like that it's a little rough. So I'm just smearing it all over the figure, uh, encasing her in this, this envelope. And what's happening, the reason that it's 
turning purple and blue is because it's reactivating the parallel pen lines, which uh, are activated with moisture. They'll actually bleed. So I'm just scraping this gesso all over the figure, all over the paper, encasing her basically in an envelope, and creating some interesting textures and shapes and tones for me to go and react to now uh, as I move through the piece. So one thing that I, I like to do, especially when I don't have a, a plan or a need for a piece to evolve in any one way or another, uh, is to throw myself curveballs and to react to them with the medium to try and produce something of just a bit more interesting than anything I could have uh, consciously tried to conceive of or create. So I was letting things dry there for a bit before I went in, and now I'm going to start to punch things up with my trusty black FW acrylic ink. And I'm just using cheap old uh, Dick Blick round watercolor brushes here to lay in the darks, just to punch up some of these shapes to emphasize some of these forms. And things are going to change. Things are going to change. I actually go back in quite extensively once this piece is finished, which I'll, I'll show you later. And I change this drawing quite a bit uh, with essentially painting with ink and acrylic. But for right now, I'm still laying down the big broad masses, turning form with light and dark, but focusing on the overall shape, trying not to get lost in rendering anything, but letting the, the shapes carry the piece. That's always the primary concern for me is do the big simple shapes carry the piece are they interesting so here I was still trying to uh, to determine whether or not I wanted to show her in the environment she's actually in in the reference she's just lying on a bed or if I wanted to abstract things out and just treat them again purely these big blocks, big shapes, big compositional elements. So just emphasizing her eyes. Uh, here I was playing with the idea of, do I want to paint out these sheets? Carving out her shape with the FW acrylic ink. And I like to lay it down with a palette knife. It's a great way to get uh, a lot of ink down over a broad area pretty quickly and to get some interesting textures. So I literally just scrape it up with a palette knife, dump it down, move it all around, and treat it the same way that I would paint oil on canvas if I was doing some palette knife painting. And so I'm just creating extra textures. So the, the gesso has dried on the paper and it resists the ink, uh, which creates some interesting opacity uh, transitions. So preserving some of that, uh, covering some of that, basically just, again, putting down marks and reacting to them and seeing what stands out and what seems to be the most interesting. So I've decided at this point just to, to turn this into a big abstract shape behind her for emphasis. Uh, just transform this into a big, rough, black rectangle to corral her shape on the page and to just abstract this entire composition a bit more, which I happen to like. I think it's probably a sensibility that I picked up from guys like Egon Schiele and Gustav Klimt who didn't have a problem uh, taking their figures and, and having the figure be the composition having no reference to any kind of perspective or background or real locale. It's just the lines and the shapes of the figure reacting to the four corners of the paper and creating their own composition. So that's what I'm doing here. Carving out her hand, laying down thicker ink, 
scrubbing it all in the same way that I would with oil paint and then going in and again emphasizing portions of her face, the lips, the eyes, the eyebrows, uh, her hair, trying to decide whether I want to keep it blonde or do as I'm doing here, which is essentially just darkening the whole thing. And there's some really interesting textures that you can't quite catch just yet, but you'll see in a minute or two uh, that the gesso and the ink have created on the paper. So at this point, I've decided to darken up her hair. Again, just as a, an interesting compositional element to further emphasize her face and separate it out from the rest of her body. And at this point, I'm more or less done with the big masses of the drawing. And the portion of the demo that we're at now is gonna pause and we're gonna move into the aftermath. Just a second. So what I wanted to do is shoot a little bit of an addendum to that demo because once the piece was, you know, quote unquote, finished, I actually went in and wound up changing things quite a bit, which happens sometimes with something that I'm, I'm going in and really doing more uh, sort of painting as opposed to just straight drawing. So as you can tell, uh, I dropped in just these two design elements, these lines, which don't have any purpose except as compositional aids. Uh, using this, it's just, it's just a Staples correction tape applier, uh, which I'll use sometimes to get really crisp, straight white lines. I don't use it often, but sometimes it's fun. And I continue to play with dropping uh, acrylic gesso and uh, then white paint over top of that to really bring out some of these highlights. And you can see more of the texture when I zoom in like this. It's a little difficult to get this kind of fidelity when I'm doing the demo itself just because uh, I can't get the camera, my phone, that close. But we'll get a real camera here soon, folks, and that won't be an issue. But you can really see the grain and the texture of that gesso. It's really actually rather rough. Uh, and then I went and I, I changed her face quite a bit as well, and I threw quite a bit of ink and paint on top of it. But you can still see here where the parallel pen lines creep through whatever you put on top of them. So you've always got these faint ghost lines showing up through the piece, which actually is kind of neat here because it sort of looks like a shadow, which is not anything I would be able to uh, account for and it's purely just a benefit of improvisation. I also dropped in just some more corrective white lines, uh, which lend just a bit of crispness and shape to some of these forms. And that's, uh, that's really it. I built up some of, some of the form in the hands slightly. Uh, but not too much. Again, the emphasis is always going to be for me on shape. Shape, shape, shape. Shape is king, shape is queen. Shape is the thing that your eye catches first. Uh, we read things in line second. So even if you're drawing in line, you wanna consider the silhouette, the overall shape. And that is the thing that is gonna carry the piece. So that when you come in, to render something, as in the case of her face, uh, it's got emphasis and it's got impact, and it's not just rendering for the sake of rendering, it's lending polish and finish to uh, something that's really just a, a really simple piece, you know? It's a really simple piece. It's just a foreshortened figure. You know, don't ask me if the anatomy is a thousand percent correct. It's not. You know, there's exaggeration here, in her arm, this hand is a little small. Uh, this hand is coming forward in the space, it's a little big. But that's observational drawing, that's reactionary drawing, that's working from good photographic reference and then just playing, you know, giving yourself permission to play and to have fun and not being so married to being literally correct. But that's just me, that's just the way that I like to work. That's not how everyone likes to work. And if this piece was for something, you know, and if it required more 
attention be paid to perspective and so forth. I might pencil it out more. I might pay more attention to these things, but this is just for me. This is just for you guys. So I don't really care. Uh, and I'm, I'm free to have fun. I'm free to enjoy. And that's really the whole point. You want to have fun. You want to enjoy. And reactionary drawing, contour drawing, uh, rolling with the punches, you know, letting things lie where they fall and, you know, digging into the process and valuing the process uh, and not being precious with things. That's really what, what drawing is about for me. It's about the process of putting lines down, putting paint down, reacting to things, getting happy, unexpected accidents uh, where a more studied approach might fall flat. So that's where this piece wound up. Uh, I will, I'll include a scan of it as well so that you guys can zoom in and, and see it for yourselves. And that's it. That's about it for this demo.